let us have a look at the kinetics of second order reaction. Now as you know that the order of a reaction is defined as the sum of the powers of the concentration terms of the reactants in the experimentally determined weight equation for the reaction. And hence for a second order reaction the sum will be equal to 2. All right. Now uh, let us uh, have a few examples of uh, second order reaction. I have listed a few examples like uh, the formation of hydrogen iodide from hydrogen and iodine. Okay. Uh, its rate is written, the rate expression is written as K into concentration of hydrogen into concentration of iodine and you can see that the sum of the powers of these two concentration terms is equal to 2. Okay, similarly, another example, reaction between NO2 and F2, even though in the reaction uh, equation you find that the uh, number of molecules involved is 3, the, in the rate expression uh, you can see that only uh, one molecule of NO2, NO2 and one molecule of F2 is uh, uh, involved. See, here it must be NO2, I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, this again is a second order reaction. Another example is the decomposition of uh, HI to H2 and I2, the reverse of the first reaction which we have written and its rate is given as K into HI to the power of 2. So this is an example of a single molecule. This is an example of three molecules involved and this is an example, the first one is an example of two molecules involved. All right. We, ha we do have other second order reactions like saponification of ester, okay, benzoin condensation and then uh, gas phase thermal decomposition of chlorine monoxide. All, in all these, the order of the reaction is 2. All right. Now, uh, let us move on to how do we arrive at the integrated rate ex equation for a second order reaction. Now, before we go into that, we need to know there are two cases for a second order reaction. One case is when there is only one reactant or when there are two reactants and both have the same initial concentration. Now, we have in fact derived the integrated rate expression for this uh, case in my earlier video. Okay, the second case is uh, when the two reactants have different initial concentrations. Okay, so the reaction wherein we have two reactants and both these two reactants have different initial concentrations. So in this video, we will be discussing the second case. Okay, the first case has already been discussed. Now, uh, let us come up with the general rate expression, I mean uh, 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 equation for uh, the situation wherein two reactants are present but each of them are having different initial concentration. Okay, so uh, it, let it be A plus B giving product P. Okay, and its rate can be written as rate equal to K into A into B. Okay, now uh, since we have uh, taken the condition that the two initial, the initial concentration of these two uh, reactants will be different. Let us assume that the initial concentration of A will be A moles per liter and uh, that of the reactant B will be B moles per liter. So A and B will be the initial concentration of uh, reactants A and B. Okay. Uh, now after time t, if x moles of uh, A and B has been used up, that is the decrease in the concentration of reactants is A x moles per liter, then the uh, concentration of A and B present after time t will be A minus x moles per liter and B minus x moles per liter, isn't it? Okay, so the, the A minus x and B minus x moles per liter will be the concentration of the reactants A and B after time t. Okay, now come, uh, having this assumption, uh, these two assumptions, we are moving on to the derivation. So keeping these two, these uh, uh, three assumptions in mind, we will write the rate expression as rate equal to dx by dt in terms of for the formation of product or rate equal to uh, k into a minus x into b minus x in terms of the rate equation, experimentally determined rate expression equation, wherein a minus x 
is the concentration of A at time after at time t and B minus x is the concentration of B at time t. Okay. Now, uh, uh, we can rearrange this equation as bring all the x terms to one side. You get dx by A minus x into B minus x is equal to k dt. Okay. And uh, when you resolve the left hand side of this equation 2 uh, into partial fractions, you come up with this equation, equation 3, 1 by a minus b into 1 by b minus x minus 1 by a minus x into dx is equal to k dt. So this, uh, the left hand side of the equation 2 is being resolved into partial fractions and you get arrive at this expression, equation 3. Now uh, you integrate this equation 3, when you integrate the equation 3, the solution which you get is equation 5, 1 by a minus b into minus ln b minus x plus ln a minus x equal to kt plus c, where c is the constant of integration. Okay, now uh, you can simplify equation 5 like these two ln terms can be brought together, you can put it as a minus x minus by b minus x, you come up with equation 6. Okay. So, uh, from equation 5 to 6 is simple arithmetic. What have you done? You have convert, I mean, uh, brought these two together. The long terms, you have put the long terms together. Okay. So, that is uh, equation 6. Now, what we need to do is, what will be the situation when time is 0? That is when, uh, initially, what will be the condition? That is, what happens to equation 6 when t is equal to 0? When t is equal to 0, we know that x will be equal to 0, isn't it? The reaction wouldn't have started. And hence, these x terms will be 0, the t term will be 0, so equation 6 will become 1 by a minus b ln a by b equal to c. Now, uh, the way we have done the derivation for the first case, the same way, put the equation 7 to equation 6, that is, instead of C in equation 6, you substitute 1 by A minus B into ln A by B, okay, and you arrive at equation 8, okay. Though the equation looks quite big, it's simple, it is simple arithmetic, okay, you arrive at equation 8, you rearrange equation 8 and you get a, a equation 9, okay, you've taken KT out, to one side and uh, the uh, 1 by a by a minus b ln a minus x by b minus x of the left hand side uh, and ln a, a by b of the right hand side has been put together and you get equation 9. Okay, solving this, okay, further simplifying this, you arrive at equation 10, okay, wherein you are taking t to the uh, right hand side t from the left hand side is taken to the right hand side that's all and the long terms have been brought together okay and uh, you get equation 10 okay change long to log okay you multiply by 2.203 you get equation 11 okay this equation that is equation 11 is the integrated rate equation for second order reaction Okay, equation 11 is the integrated rate equation for second order reaction wherein both the reactants are having different concentrations. So 2.303 by T into A minus B log B into A minus X by A into B minus X where A and B are the initial concentrations of the reactants. A minus X is the concentration at time of A at time T and B minus X is the concentration of B at time T. Okay, and here also the unit of uh, K will be liter, mole inverse, second inverse. Okay, so uh, the derivation is very simple. Uh, a bit more of uh, terms have been included, but the arithmetic is very simple. Okay, now let us see how do we represent them graphically, this particular uh, case of the second order reaction. How do we graphically represent? Okay, so we have the x-axis. Uh, uh, and uh, we have the y-axis. In x-axis, we put time, take time. And in y-axis, we take up 
2.303 by a minus b log b into a minus x by a, a into b minus x. That is the uh, first term in the, uh, I mean the right hand side term in the uh, integrated rate equation. And when you plot these two, you get a straight line with a slope, a positive slope. The line will be passing through the origin, there is no intercept. And the slope will give you the k value. The slope of this line will give you the k value. Okay, so this is the plot for the second order reaction. Okay, wherein uh, there are two reactants and the concentration of the two reactants are uh, different. Alright, hope this is clear to you, this derivation in uh, the graph. If you have any more clarifications regarding this, please feel free to ask me. Thank you.